Everyone's having a good morning. And uh, just give me one second to get set up here. Yeah, Shadia is asking, what do everybody have for Sahur? I hope everybody had something better than I did. I uh, was rushed a little bit and had a bottle of vitamin water. So let's see how far that gets me today, inshallah. Uh, let's see here. All right. All right, Bismillah. Let's go ahead and uh, get started. Um, so, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh for everyone who is joining us, um, whether you know, returning or for the first time, or if you're streaming this, if you're in the room, wherever you might be, um, or if you may be watching this in the future point at, at, at some time. Um, alhamdulillah. So uh, welcome back and welcome. Um, and, you know, to the second or third night of Ramadan, uh, the third day of Ramadan. And I uh, just wanted to lift up a few things as we get started here. And the Prophet had, uh, had, had told the community of believers that uh, the body has rights over you. And that right is among that right is uh, among those rights is the right to rest. Um, we talked a little bit yesterday about how these sessions are uh, a call to pause from the busyness of our regular routines. They're a call to um, really take that space that we often don't get or afford to ourselves in Ramadan. Um, but we must remember that when we enter Ramadan, we enter mind, body, and soul. And oftentimes we get really concerned just about either the soul or just about the body. Uh, and one of the other three uh, starts to suffer. And so we want to bring balance here uh, as was brought in. The purpose of these sessions, though, has been apart from giving us that chance of respite, that chance of pause, uh, has also been um, to, to elevate how we uh, understand and how we see uh, the divine, um, not just in the context of limited to a prayer mat or limited to between the binds of a book, um, but also seeing the divine in any and all actions that we do and in any and everything that we interact with. Uh, there's a really powerful quote from uh, Imam Ali uh, that uh, says, I don't look at anything in this world except I see God in it. Um, and it's just, it, it just gives you this, this heightened sense of God consciousness that everything around us is surround is, is uh, imbued with a divine spark, a divine presence, whatever you may want to call it. So uh, last time we covered the names of uh, Al-Quddus, As-Salam, Al-Mu'min. Um, and before that, we covered Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, and Al-Malik. Um, in, in the first three, uh, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Malik, we lifted up the element of both horizontal and a vertical connection um, to uh, both ourselves as well as the divine, as well as our attachments to this world. Um, but most importantly, how we are connected to one another through the divine, um, but also we're free of the attachment of, uh, of, of any kind of ownership or any kind of direct responsibility that uh, we, we, we may feel to uh, incorporate our own type of rule or anything like that, that uh, we are caretakers. We are not, um, we, we are just uh, temporary hosts um, here and we're just take care, uh, caring, uh, taking care of what has been given to us. Um, and so uh, in seeing that we lift up our sense of connection to the the divine, uh, knowing that we will return um, to the Lord. And it's really interesting because in Surah Fajr, um, you know, we have uh, this command uh, that says, Irji, that says return. Um, and you can't really return to a place that you haven't been to before. Uh, it's just the con the grammatically, you just can't go to a place that you haven't you know, gone to before and return there. Um, so it tells us that we are a part and parcel of uh, being near to Allah, of being close to Allah, uh, and that our true purpose is to return to the uh, to our Lord. Um, but we can't return there um, because you know we can't return there until we have uh, a heightened sense of consciousness, a awareness of where that set, that place is, or who that entity is to whom we return. Uh, and in Al Qudus uh, and Al Salam Al Mu'min, um, we talked about uh, how. Um, in Al-Qudus, we have the utmost holiness and purity uh, in Allah, um, the utmost serenity and peace in As-Salam, uh, and the assurance and protection of faith in Al-Mu'min. Uh, and from these names, we derive this type of heart work, this purification uh, and this polishing of the heart. Um, 
And in, uh, in these names also, we come to see that we can become our best selves when we aspire beyond the distractions of this world, when we work on purifying ourselves inwardly and outwardly, uh, using our faith as a source of protection and ignition, uh, and knowing that in doing so, uh, our hearts will increase in peace, and we reflect that the sparks of divin divine purity that we see around us, um, they're manifest, uh, and that this protection uh, and peace into the world around us is not just something of our doing, but this is something that has been gifted to us. So as always, uh, we begin our sessions with uh, the recitation of uh, the Asma al Husna, the 99 names of Allah. Um, at, and just before uh, I do that, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll share my screen so you're able to see the names of Allah uh, on the screen here. Um, but before I do that, just a just a friendly reminder. Um, this is a hadith from the from um, from the Prophet Sallam, just a very famous hadith, just reminding us of our intention of being in this space. Um, so uh, it's a hadith Qudsi, um, in which uh, it's uh, what that means is that it's uh, basically the process I'm saying that Allah said, um, so it's a direct um, statement of Allah. It's not part of the Quran, um, but it's a statement of Allah uh, recorded in the traditions. And so uh, the Prophet of Allah said um, that Allah the Exalted says, I am as my worshiper or my, um, my, my slave expects me to be, and I am with them when they remember me. I am with them when they remember me inwardly, I will, and when they remember me inwardly, I will remember them inwardly. And if they remember me in an assembly, I will remember them in a better assembly, and so on and so forth. But uh, it shows that this concept that when we remember Allah, when we uh, really engage in intentional remembrance uh, of Allah, uh, that this is not just a, uh, a, a one, one, one stop connection, that there, there is someone on the other side, there's an entity on the other side that is also remembering us. Um, and the dhikr, the remembrance that we might do here uh, of a name, it's got to be carried also by deeds. It's got to be carried also by change in thoughts and emotions. Uh, failing, uh, if we fail any of these, though, uh, it becomes ma ma mainly just a mere game of just recitation and uh, oftentimes comes back to self-centeredness because we're like, oh, we're closer to God. We're just reciting the names. No, in order to really taste that name, in order to really feel it, we have to repeat it, but also act on it and incorporate it. So um, let me go ahead and share my uh, screen, inshallah. And uh, uh, as always, you are welcome to um, follow along on the screen. Um, you are welcome to recite um, to yourself, to recite out loud, whatever is comfortable for you. Um, and uh, like I said, the screen will have translations of the names as well as the Arabic, and uh, we will inshallah go from there. But let us center ourselves. Let's take a deep breath. And the purpose of this is to really feel the divine in and around us. Uh, you don't have to understand all the names. You don't have to know all the names. Um, just be cognizant that all the names are being recited here. Bismillah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allah alladhi La ilaha illahu ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Al-Malik al-Quddus al-Salam Al-Mu'min al-Muhaymin al-Aziz al-Jabbar Al-Muttakabbir al-Khalik al-Bari Al-Musawwir al-Ghaffar Al-Qahar al-Wahab al-Razak Al-Fattah al-Alim القابض الباسط الخافض الرافع المعز المذل السميع البصير الحكم العدل اللطيف الخبير الحليم العظيم الغفور الشكور العلي الكبير الحفيذ المقيت الحسيب الجليل الكريم الرقيب المجيب الواصي الحكيم الودود المجيد الباعث الشهيد 
الحق الوقيل القاوي المتين الولي الحميد المحسي مبدي المعيد المحي المميت الحي القيوم الواجد الماجد الواحد الأحد الصمد القادر المقتدر المقدم المؤخر الأول الآخر الظاهر الباطن الوالي المتعالي البر التواب المنتقم الأقوى الرؤوف المالك الملك ذو الجلال والإكرام المقصد الجامع الغني المغني المانئ الضار نافه نور الهاد البديع الباقي الوارث الرشيد الصبور. So as I mentioned, sometimes it might feel that, oh my gosh, there's so many names of Allah. There's just so much that is there. And uh, what, what, what's important to lift up is that we'll go through each of these. And we've gone through already six of them, inshallah. We'll add uh, three more to our, uh, to our belt here. Um, but just, just to know that uh, you know, Allah is manifest. Allah might be to us one word, one association, um, but Allah is manifest through these divine names in the world, in all these different attributes. Uh, so uh, our, our names, as I mentioned for today, um, that we're going to be covering um, are going to be uh, Al-Muhaymin, Al-Aziz, and Al-Jabbar um, that you may have seen there. Um, and just interesting side note, I, don't, I had noticed this in terms of the recitations of the Asma al-Husna that you might see, like one of my favorite ones is like uh, of Atif Aslam, but then also there's like the one that we, a lot of us grew up with. And I had noticed they, they all left out Al-Ahad and I was like, Where, where's the love for that? But uh, I never found, I was like, all right, so it's really 98 names that they're reciting, but you know, I don't, I don't know if anybody else caught that, but you know, uh, it's just interesting tidbit. So I was like, okay, maybe I'm missing something. But Bismillah, let's uh, let's begin our uh, reflections here real quick before we go into the dhikr. So Al Muhaymin, we've uh, we talked about this actually, and if you're in our spiritual connection groups, um, uh, this was a name we specifically lifted up. Um, but Al Muhaymin uh, is can be defined as uh, the watchful, the protector, the guarantor, the one who determines without limitation. So you, uh, there's so many different meanings um, to this. Oftentimes, when you see it on a poster, it's probably says like the protector or the protecting one. Um, but this concept of watchfulness is also uh, really interesting. Um, that's there. But uh, as I mentioned, it comes from the root of uh, protection, the root of protection from fear and worry specifically, uh, as well as witnessing, observation, and attestation. Um, and so it combines this quality of faith with protection, as well as a active witness. And uh, al um in this, in, in Allah, in uh, al um watches over everything, but also protects everything as, as watching over it and also sees a creation's each deed. So every one of us, any, uh, you know, any other created being, um, the Quran mentions that, you know, not a leaf falls, but that Allah knows of it. Um, and so uh, Allah knows that which is inside us, that's which, uh, which we might be uh, thinking, uh, but also that which we manifest. Um, and which we which we do outwardly. However, some folks may say like, "Hey, man, that's kind of weird. Like, that's like you know, I'm not okay with NSA um, spying on me. Like, why 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 is uh, why is this any any cooler?" But the the the, the important thing here is that um, though this is a watchful attribute, um, and though it may feel like, "Hey, you might be under a microscope," uh, it may give you that impression, but it shouldn't feel that way because, uh, and it shouldn't restrict your joy of life. It shouldn't be like, well, I, should I do this? Should I do this? I can't do this. Like, you know, if it's something you feel is a gray area, um, rather it should really um, enhance your experience and it should enhance, you, enhance your awareness of what is around you uh, and evaluating what is substantive to you, um, but just being mindful to yourself. So Al-Muhaymin helps us be mindful of our thoughts, 
of our words, of our feelings, of our deeds, um, and our actions. Um, so it, it, it helps us create this cognizance that uh, we, we aspire to and we, we really get lifted up on different like Instagram posts or whatnot. It's like, hey, be mindful today. It's like, all right, cool. Um, but this just tells you to be another degree of that mindfulness um, to where you are cognizant, not just of what you're doing, but how your actions impact everything around you. Um, so it allows you to be accountable as well. Uh, al muhaymin as I mentioned, knows that which is hidden and secret and that which is buried in the heart, but also that which we show it, uh, when we show it, that, that which becomes known when we either write it down or when we say it directly. Uh, so these things are known, but as again, in being mindful and incorporating this name, uh, we as humans become more mindful beyond a specific measure. Uh, and we also then see the divinity in the world around us. So the important takeaway for this name is that Allah is watchful, Allah is protecting, um, and Allah is the one who uh, sets these limits, but also uh, is, is, is the witness to our lives, is, is the witness uh, to in the background or in the foreground, um, and just seeing all that we do. Um, but this this witness is not just like, you know, just, you know, you, you, you kind of getting uh, either spied on or just like, you know, being watched perpetually by a helicopter parent or anything like that. Um, this is more in the sense of a very mindful watching, because when Allah watches you, it's not just for the sake of let me just watch you and just see what all you're doing. Are you doing this right? Are you doing that right? No, it's to help you uh, engender a sense of mindfulness, but also because that watchfulness is paired with protection. So that that person that's watching that that mom that is watching the kid playing the park uh, or that dad uh, just watching their kid uh, at a sports game or whatnot, um, or whatever it might be, um, and they, they, they see uh, their child in distress or they see something happen, um, they're aware of it, um, and they, they react accordingly. So in, in accordance that this watchfulness is paired with a protection, this watchfulness is paired um, with a loving, um, uh, a loving sense of protection that uh, that is there for the creation. So when we think of Allah as watchful of us, don't think of it in the sense of like, hey, NSA with binoculars uh, spying outside your as, at your home or with like a van with a satellite dish on it. Um, but think of in the sense of a parent, a concerned parent that might just be at the park with their child or a parent watching their kid take their first steps um, and how they're holding that space. Um, they're watchful of that child. And as soon as anything happens, as soon as the baby monitor goes off or whatever happens, they run full speed um, and they would flip a car if they could just to get to that spot. Um, and they do it because they want to protect that being because that being is from them and uh, what we what we learn from ar-Rahman and ar-Rahim is the divine names uh, have a root uh, that's shared with the womb the motherly womb uh, so Allah is not just a uh, a the fatherly figure that we should fear have uh, be you know have this feeling of guilt and uh, resentment um, and any kind of anxiety in that aspect towards um, or feelings of shame directly but also reminding us of our mother reminding us of the motherly qualities um, that uh, that are so manifest and that many of us just uh, feel just lost in uh, when 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 we think about these these thoughts uh, so thinking of, of al muhaymin as as that and not in the sense of you know, someone that's there just to see and check off everything that what you're doing, what you're doing, what you're doing, but someone that's there for a watchful protection, but then that also helps you become more mindful and watchful of what you do. And Al-Aziz. Al-Aziz is the powerful, the honorable, the precious, the friendly. And uh, this name encompasses all things that are valuable, majestic, or powerful. Um, we know in this name that Allah rules the heavens and the earth and everything in between. Um, but also in this name, this name that really just like, you know, just evokes power, this name that really just, uh, you know, just talks about strength and whatnot. Through this name, we help to overcome our own weaknesses. Um, and it comes from the root of being strong, being powerful, being respected, um, but also uh, being um, uh, to, to invigorate, to be dear, to be cherished, to be precious, um, this gentleness that is there. And uh, it combines the two qualities in this name of Aziz, the, uh, the qualities of strength and the qualities of power with the aspects of gentleness and uh, mildness and moderation. 
And this name can lead from a lead us specifically from a place of guilt and shame and weakness into a sense of really strong self-esteem, as well as healing the wounds that we might have and shame and humiliation. Again, um, you know, we 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 may have these different weaknesses. We may feel like we're uh, you know we're not strong enough. We're not able to do something. Um, but this is one that can help us get to that point, but not in a manner that like just completely shakes you and like, hey, what what are you doing? Um, you know, what you can be a better than this but in a gentle manner tell you of what your true potential is um, it helps restore our sense of worth uh, and helps us grow um, this gentleness that we incorporate is and can be our source of strength and, you know the world can be a harsh place uh, we've probably all had uh, experiences where uh, we we come to associate strength or just the connotation of it with brute force with uh, just a harshness um, but what the example of the prophet and uh, the um, majesty and the quality of Allah shows in Al Aziz is that gentleness is that strength. Um, and that strength comes from gentleness and uh, gentleness comes from that strength and they're, they're mutual. Um, and so it helps us then conquer our wounded ego, conquer that ego, that uh, part of ourself that is self-reproaching that tells us, no, you can't do this, you can't do this. Uh, the, um, the Quran terms it as, uh, you know, this, this nafs al-lawama, the, the tradition terms it as nafs al-lawama, um, as this self-reproaching self that's like, no, you're not going to get any better. You're just, you're just doing bad. Like, you know, just, uh, it's just all, you know, a lot of negative there. Uh, and this really helps us conquer that, um, but in a manner that's gentle, in a manner that lets you care for your heart and not disregard a certain Certain part of it. Um, so we want to uh, incorporate this to not just um, not just help us to uh, become more repaired or anything like that, but also for us to elevate ourselves as beings on this earth. So you'll see a connection with all these names that they inspire a sense of change and a sense of mindfulness for the surroundings, as well as for you to then increase uh, in, in whatever capacity you have been created in whatever role you are, you are increasingly mindful of all that which is around us. The last name we cover today is Al-Jabbar. And this is a really beautiful name because it, uh, it has so many different meanings, but um, some of the meanings lifted up are, you know, the one who unites, the healer who realigns, the one who has power and the one who improves. Qualities of uh, correcting, improving, regulating, relieving, balancing, appeasing are all found in the root of this word. Um, and it's also uh, connecting um, uh, different meanings of restoration, of bringing things back to a balance and bringing things back to normal, um, but also uh, an, the, uh, from the root of consoling, from the root of helping up, um, from the root of treating somebody kindly and to really correct and realign. Um, and so uh, a basic meaning from all these different things can be seen as a type of holistic healing, not just a medical healing, not just a spiritual healing, but a healing that really is all encompassing. Um, so it's not just health, but it's, it's what we talked about how you enter Ramadan, it's mind, body and soul. Um, and that can be uh, brought into and facilitated by this name of Al-Jabbar. Al-Jabbar uh, stores to us that restores that health um, for us that might have been broken into pieces um, or suffered some kind of trauma uh, and helps restore it. As I mentioned, uh, there was a, um, uh, a, a tradition or a statement by uh, the teacher of Rumi, uh, Shams Tabrizi, in which uh, Shams had said that uh, the one thing that uh, Allah is not is broken. Uh, and the one thing that we are is broken. It's not, a, it's not a shared quality that's there. So bring your brokenness to Allah. Uh, bring that brokenness to Allah um, and allow Allah to anneal, allow Allah to help repair that. But the, the important thing is that our brokenness is not something that uh, just needs to be taken away. We, we learn from our wounds and we become more beautiful. We become more holistic humans because of those wounds. Think of, uh, you, you sometimes see this in, 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 uh, in, in some uh, Asian pottery um, that uh, that shatters, but it's put back together, um, and it's it's annealed with gold lines. It's annealed with uh, you know the, this gold that helps bring it together, and so it's even more beautiful. It's even more valuable than it was when it was like a, a just a solid piece altogether. Um, and 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 the mindset behind uh, how this restoration comes here.
So uh, it, 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 this name helps us uh, not just identify maybe or be cognizant of our weaknesses, but also to identify our strengths and lead us into uh, better paths and better opportunities. It heals the hearts um, and it unites the opposites. And it also removes any kind of in, uh, internal uh, spiritual um, or just ego blindness that we might uh, bring about, as well as uh, feelings of envy, feelings of arrogance, negative feelings that we might have, it helps to realign those in a, in a better fashion. Uh, and lastly, it opens that door of healing of which we know the first step is to be accepting and honest of where you are, whether it's a physical ailment or whether it is uh, some other type of spiritual um, uh, rut you might be in, um, you recognize where you are. Um, and you can't start a healing until you acknowledge or until you make that admission of where you are um, and uh, starting from there. And so incorporating this name uh, for us allows us to connect better with our inner and our outer worlds and being conscious of our lives and spheres, inshallah. So we close today, um, as always, with a uh, dhikr. Um, this is not by no means an exhaustive thicker. Um, this is one that uh, you all can repeat to yourselves in, 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 in the days going forward and in the, in the rest of the day going forward. Um, but just remembering these names that we lifted up, Al-Muhaymin, Al-Aziz, Al-Jabbar. Um, and as always, I'll recite um, these names in, uh, in threes uh, and just do a repetition. Um, but you're welcome to follow along. If some of y'all have been attending since the first session, you might catch on to the rhythm. Um, but if not, just uh, um, hopefully you, you'll enjoy it. But again, center yourself in a way that you can hear these names, whether you need to close your eyes, which is probably, uh, I've already probably achieved that for you, um, or you just need to put your head down, whatever it is, but hear these names. Uh, and inshallah, we'll, we'll, we'll close out with these. Bismillah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al Muhaymin, 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 Ya 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 Muhaymin. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al Aziz, 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 Ya Aziz, Ya Aziz, Ya Aziz, Ya Aziz. Ya Aziz, Ya Aziz, Ya Aziz, Ya Aziz. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. Al Jabbar, 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 Al Jabbar. Al Jabbar, 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 Al Jabbar. Ya Jabbar, 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 Ya Jabbar. La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, Allah, Allah, Allah. لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله 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 Sisters and brothers, Jazakallah Khair, if you attended today uh, by joining the room or live streaming um, or watching this in the future, blessings to you on this Ramadan um, and the rest of the day. And I hope that this day was, or the session was of benefit, but let's just remember that any step that we take, any 
uh, place that we go, any action that we do, we are in the presence of the divine. And as uh, Ali uh, radiallahu an had mentioned that I don't see anything except that I see God in it, anything from our meals that we eat or the people we interact with, or even ourselves when we think uh, and reflect to ourselves. So I hope that this session has been of benefit. Inshallah, we'll see y'all uh, tomorrow or in the future sessions there. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum.